Episode 3 of Dragon Ball Daima is out, and this video will contain spoilers for it. So if you don't want to be spoiled, go check out the episode and then come back. Quite a few people have asked where they can see the series. It's now on Netflix, it's on Crunchyroll, and I believe it's on Hulu as well. Alright, let's just jump right into it. This episode had Akira Toriyama's fingerprints all over it. Episode 3 starts right where episode 2 left off. Goku and Shin are in Glorio's ship and they are heading to the demon realm. Glorio and Shin explain that in order to get to the demon realm, the ship can't just warp there. They have to go to a warp station and the closest warp station is at a planet called Planet Badapi. Oh, before that, let me mention that Glorio's ship runs off of magical power and because of that it's faster than normal ships that's extremely interesting especially since a few moments later they describe king goma as having a lot of magical power anyway back to the warp station shin asks glorio to stop for a second so he can relay their location to kabito kai so glorio stops but then a few moments later after they arrive shin learns that there is this new pin system that's been imposed on traveling to the demon realm and he says that didn't exist before now i don't know about you guys but instantly when i heard this i thought who's imposing these rules who's creating these new rules to keep the demons in check that even the king of the demons and we're gonna find out that they could potentially be multiple kings later but someone who's as powerful as the king of demons has to uh, abide by these rules because we saw king goma he had to use the same pin system when he came to earth Anyway, Shin tries to get that information over to Kabito, but he is unsuccessful. And even though Goku says it's probably going to be all right, we just know this is going to be a problem for Vegeta and Piccolo later on when it's time for them to come to the Demon Realm. The Warp Station Goldfish wants to confirm that they're from the Demon Realm before it lets them back into the Demon Realm, which I think is a little strange because it didn't confirm that King Goma was from the Overworld before it let him come to Earth. So for some reason, it was a bit more strict about going to the Demon World than it was about coming to the Overworld. Although, Shin did mention that the fish is a little emotional and Goku was annoying it by calling it a goldfish. I guess I'm annoying it too by calling it a fish. I had to pause and look it up. Its name is Warp-sama, which is the laziest name I've ever heard in Dragon Ball. Or oh, the thing that warps you back and forth, let's just call it Warp-sama. Anyway, Shin disguises Goku by growing his ears, using magic, and we get to see the first Saiyan elf in Dragon Ball. No, it's kind of funny seeing Goku with pointy ears. But you know, I just want to say, I don't I don't really get why people aren't don't seem to be picking up on this as much as I would expect. They're really making a big deal about these pointy ears and separating people who have pointy ears from those who do not. That's why I made uh, my last video where I was pointing out all the races that had pointy ears, the ones that I could find anyway, and and even in that, people were saying stuff like, it doesn't make sense to say the Sabermen had pointy ears because the Saiyans grew them. And it's like, yeah, but that doesn't mean their race can't originate from the demon world. And the show is choosing to make a clear distinction for whatever reason. Obviously, it's going to play a role later on in Daima, but in the Dragon Ball world as a whole, it's a pretty big deal. Anyway, after entering Warp Sama, the crew arrives at the way station between worlds and we find out here for the first time that there's actually multiple worlds within the demon realm. King Goma is from the first world, but Goku and company are heading to the third world. And it's obviously some sort of class system. The first world seems to be like royalty, etc. And the lower down you go, the the more scummy the demons become. It seems, that's just my first impression. Like the third world is the bad neighborhood kind of thing. They arrive to the third world of the demon realm and this is what we've been seeing in the trailers, in the opening scene. It's a lot better looking than Goku expected. In fact, he says it looks a lot like Earth. Goku asks Glorio to stop so that he can get some fresh air. And when they stop, we get quite a few new additions to the Dragon Ball lore again. Daima is just really lore heavy, man. They're really giving you new stuff, which I appreciate. I love I love this kind of stuff. But we find out that the demon worlds are now separated by a barrier from each other. And that even within the demon world, you can only travel between worlds using Warp Sama. 
Also, the only people who are allowed to use Warp Sama are people from the first Demon World. And right away again, it feels like there are these really strict laws being imposed on the demons of the demon realm. My question is, who is doing this? I have my theories, which is the, it's gonna be in the next video I put up, but who is powerful enough to create a pin system that all demons have to follow and then separate them so only certain demons can travel between worlds, etc., etc. By the way, just so you don't feel like I'm trying to string you along, I think it's the angels. Anyway, we find out that Shin, he is from the second world originally, and his demonic race is called the Glen. So that's a pretty cool bit of lore. Also, we flew over a statue of Deborah, and it appears that Deborah was king of the third world as well. And since King Goma didn't become king of the first world until Deborah died, it means that Deborah was king of multiple worlds at the same time, likely. So we're gonna have to find out the story behind that, but considering that we see Deborah's dad in the intro, I think that Daima is going to jump into that, and I'm, I'm here for it. I'm actually really looking forward to finding out about how the royalty works in the demon world. So Goku stops for some fresh air. We find out that there's almost invisible smog that covers this part of the demon realm, making the air very heavy. Glorio says it's relatively harmless, but it does slow them down. And guys, let's just be honest, this is just another way to depower Goku and Vegeta when they start facing the bad guys. They get attacked by some bandits. Glorio pulls out a gun that shoots lasers, very similar to Miris. Again, the bandits weren't much of a problem, but still they wanted to get away, so they hop back in their ship and start heading to location. This is where Shin asks Glorio, like, hey, where are we going? Glorio says he's taking them to a town where they can stay at an inn for the night and then after that they're gonna go meet king kadan shin asks is this the guy who you work for is this the guy who gave you the order to come get goku and glorio said yes this confirms a few things one it confirms that there are now multiple kings in the demon world where it seems like it wasn't like that in the past in the past deborah appeared to be king of multiple worlds at the same time so yeah, I really want to see this flushed out and I really want to meet King Kadan. After this, they continue to the town where they're going to spend the night, our first time in a demonic town. And this is what I was talking about earlier when I said this episode had Akira Toriyama's fingerprints all over it. This town is completely the kind of thing Akira Toriyama loved to write and create in Dragon Ball. A lot of the original Dragon Ball series was like this. Goku and Bulma would go to a town and they would have to deal with some local bad guys. I feel a bit like most of what we've seen in Daima so far was created for the purpose of allowing Akira Toriyama to recreate moments like this. Everything from turning them back into kids to having smog that makes it harder for them to walk around and control their bodies. I feel like almost all of it was so that Akira Toriyama could write the bar scene where Goku is fighting a bunch of low-level demon. Now that he's gone, I wonder if scenes like this are going to continue far into the future of Dragon Ball? Like, is it just going to be all Goku and Vegeta fighting god-level opponents with their shirt off? Or are these moments going to be made priority still? It's really hard to tell because when Akira Toriyama was here, I probably would have complained about this bar scene. But now it just feels very nostalgic to me. And the idea that we may not have scenes like this in the future, it feels a bit like it's one of those you don't know what you got until it's gone uh, moments. So I like this scene. I appreciated young Goku and Glorio beating up some low level demons while he's trying to eat his demonic hamburgers. I'm happy that it now exists in the Dragon Ball world. Anyway, the episode ends with Glorio, Goku and Shin finding out that one of the bad guys stole their ship and now we're in the thick of it. So yeah, looking forward to episode four. Overall, I enjoyed this episode. I would say not a lot happened as far as story progression for Dragon Ball Daima. Like all that really happened was they warped to the demon world and spent a night at a random town. But there was a lot of world building in this episode. And to be honest, if I had to choose, I think I'll choose growing the overall Dragon Ball world over progressing in the story of Daima. That said, I still think the story was pretty interesting. 
and I love to hear what you guys think. So if you made it this far in the video, let me know. Did you enjoy this episode? Was there anything that stood out to you that I didn't talk about? Or is there anything that I talked about that needs to be expanded? Leave it in the comments below. Let me know. Guys, that's it. Do me a favor. Have yourself a great rest of your day. I will be talking to you again real soon. Bye.